Psalms chapter 44 To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, Meshkil, which means instruction. So this is another one we have to Korah, the sons, the Levites. Instruction, as in 42 was. We have heard with our ears. So it's not hearsay. You can take it to a court of law. It's been witnessed, it's been heard. O oh God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the times of old. <coughs> now, by the end of this psalm, there's trouble. And what the psalmist is doing is re he's recording what God's past victories are or have been, the history of the Jews. Because the Jews, by the end of this chapter, are in trouble. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand. It's not with armament. It's not with swords. It's with God's hand. And as we've studied the Bible so far from Genesis 1 to Psalms 43, it's God's right hand. And planted them, the Jews, in the land. Well, they're not planted now there. There's some there, but it's not their land. And we're going to see by the end of the chapter, it's because of sin. <clears throat> How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. That would be the heathen, the, the Hittites, the uh, Canaanites, the Jebusites, and the rest of the list there. Because of their sins, God brought them out of the land. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. <clears throat> Even though Joshua only lost one battle in his life, it wasn't by sword, it was by God. And then when they started leaving God, they started losing the battles. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand, there it is, the right hand of God, and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them, the Jews. Exodus, and all the battles of the Edomites, the Moabites, and, and Joshua, all the victories were God's victories. Thou art my king, capital K. O God, command deliverances, S, plural, for Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Israel, or Jacob. <clears throat> Though thee, through thee, will we push down our enemies. Only by God can you get victory. And when we get to the end of this chapter, you're going to find out there is no victory. Why? Because of sin and rebellion. Through thy name, we will tread them under that rise up against us. So America, <clears throat> the Christian nation that she is, goes under the name of ICBMs, nuclear, more submarines. Better push button technology. They don't go in the name of God. And you know what the joke is? The ones that are fighting us go in the name of Allah. They go in the name of the Quran. We've fallen as a Christian nation. How come we can't go in the name of God? Because we're going to see at the end of this, in this chapter, it's because of sin. We can't go in the name of God. I read today my Bible reading, that what God has joined, let no man put a son in And you just imagine the joke of using that in a sodomite marriage today. For I will not trust in my bow. America does. Neither shall my sword save me. 
Well, we got the elite. We got the the seals. We've got the green beret. Yeah, you ain't got nothing. Oh, we're we're winning. No, you're not. No, you're not. The enemies in our is in our nation. Making they're in Washington D.C. The enemies in our submarines. The enemies in our army. The enemies are in our navy. The na the, the, the the enemies are in the air force. The enemies in the in the marines. We haven't lost nothing. But the love of God for our sin. Listen, it's only the few that are saved that love the Lord are praying that's keeping this nation alive. I know that there's plenty of saved men in the military. Wait till God calls us all out or we start dying off. <clears throat> And you got the joke of these churches raising Christians up today. But thou, God, has saved us from our enemies. When did President Bush proclaim that God gave us victory over Iraq? Where is God being proclaimed this, this semi victory over Afghanistan? And has put them to shame that hated us. And go back and read the stories. The victories. A little boy steps up to a giant and kills him. That was shame to the Phil Philistines that they ran. <clears throat> An angel of the Lord steps up, kills a whole bunch, of, and the rest that woke up in the morning were ashamed as they went home. In God we boast all the day long. It's going to be a quite a change according to this chapter. And praise thy name forever, Selah. Now we change. One through eight is the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes. Now the present state condition of Israel is today. <clears throat> the present condition of the church. <clears throat> but thou God has cast off. And put us to shame. See one through eight was a history lesson. Nine through twenty six is current affairs for the psalmist. God at one time you did and go is not forth with our armies. So they're losing. Thou make us to turn back from the enemy with retreat, withdraw. And they which hate us spoil from themselves. They're coming into the camp taking things. And you'll read about that in the, the Chronicles of the Kings. When enemies come in and sack. When the kings himself take the gold off the door of the temple. When the king gives his own treasure to hire out enemies of the Lord to fight other enemies of the Lord. <clears throat> it's a mess we don't serve God. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat. Death. The only way a sheep could be given for meat is if he's killed. And has scattered us among the heathen. That is exactly the state the country is of Israel today. They are all over the world. They are all over America. They are not supposed to be. There should be three times a year that American Jews should make uh, Eastern and uh, American and JetBlue Airlines rich. But they don't. You know they're not following the law. The Bible says, the law says, the Old Testament says, you are to be in that land three times a year. Why aren't you? Because you rejected your Messiah. Believe it not, believe it no, 
It is the truth. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. You rejected him. And now you ain't got a king. You ain't got a priest. And you ain't got a temple. And you can find that in your scriptures too. Thou sellest thy people for naught. And history claims that Jews have been put on the block just as like the African. And the African has been bought more than the Jew. And thou hast not increased thy wealth by their price. You got nothing for them. There was no profit in the Jews for servitude. Thou makest us a reproach to our neighbors. Their neighbors around them today don't even recognize them. In the public school maps of, of that area in the Middle East, Israel is not even on their map. And a missionary told me that. A Muslim will come out and declare to you on TV and write it down and sign his name. That is not Israel's land. You know who's running around there right now? A bunch of, of people who call themselves father ain't married or supposed to be married messing around with little boys and girls or whatever. A church that's filthy is running around telling you, oh, look at uh, and Baptist preachers falling for this crap. Well, look, this is where Jesus, and this is where Jesus, and it's a lie by the scriptures. I've been to the Holy Land. Are you telling me that what's going on over there after the rejection of Jesus Christ after 70 AD, you still call that the Holy Land with the, the dumb of the rock over there? That's the Holy Land? Get more words on a talking ass than I do these preachers. A scorn. You know, there's a lot of Jewish jokes out there. You know, they say that the, the first copper wire was when somebody threw a penny between two Jews. A derision to them that are round about us. You know, they are hated over there. You know, there was kind of peace when David and Solomon were kings. But this is rebellion against God and like they're rebelling against God today. Check the scriptures. The scriptures proclaim 100% that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And if you say anything else, you will burn in hell for that lie. You are an antichrist. Read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen. They were mocked. Hitler put a, a yellow star on them. A shaking of the head among the people. It's like, who are they? Who cares? <coughs> Excuse me. My confusion is continually before me. I'm in a state of confusion. The Jews are in a state of confusion today. They don't know what from what. And I bet you you take any ten children of, of a temple today and ask them, I bet you they wouldn't know nothing. And the shame of my face has covered me. Now, Paul says we're to pray for their souls, and I do. And it's not the people. It's those religious rulers like the ones in Jesus' time that are lying to the people. Imagine them saying the Bible says not a bone of him is to be broken, and they sit down and take a broken leg of a lamb and put it on a plate to represent Jesus or represent the Messiah. And the women, I am told, they vacuum, sweep out the entire house when it comes to the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread to make sure there's no leaven anywhere in that house. But their sons and their husbands don't go over to Jerusalem like they're supposed to.
the, for the voice of him that reproaches and blasphemeth, Revelation 12, 9 and Revelation 13, 6, by reason of the enemy and the avenger. You know, there's two things that the Jews said that was very stupid. And it's recorded in the Bible. One, the Jews have to believe, because it's in the writer of Moses under Exodus. The other one's recorded in John. The first stupid thing that the Jews said when Moses came down and said, This is all the laws that God forgot. We will do and obey everything that God has said. No, you should have asked for mercy. You should have asked for grace. Because we now know the, the law was given to show you were guilty. And that you cannot do the entire law, but only Jesus. And the second stupid thing that the Jews said that is going on today is his blood be upon us and our children. So the Roman Catholics are running around still in charge of Jerusalem today. All this has come upon us. Yet have we not forgotten thee. They still, God, but they don't listen to him. They don't obey him. I mean, we can't write G-O-D case. Wow. Strain out a gnat and swallowed or whatever Jesus said. Has any Jewish person really sat down, look at the deeds of Jesus, and match it with his scriptures to see if it's truly matching the scriptures? You know why they don't do that? Because you'll find that Jesus is 100% the Messiah. <clears throat> Neither have we dwelt, dealt falsely in thy covenant. Well, their backslidden condition I bet you if you were to handle a Jew a $1 bill American, he'd take it. And by the law, he is not to take it because there's a picture of an image on it. You know, in the time of Herod, the time of Jesus, they had two sets of money. One was Roman money and one was temple money. Temple money did not have an inscription. What did Jesus say? He says, give me a coin. And they gave him a coin. He says, "What? whose image is on it? Whose superscription? They said, uh, uh, I was going to say fair. Caesar's. But you know Jesus got him twice? What are you doing with a coin that has someone's face on it? <laughs> I got you guys, didn't I? Why didn't you bring me a temple coin which had no image? Showed them right where their heart was. You ever, you ever see that one in the scriptures? There, what's the Bible say about the Jew in an image? Who gave him the coin? Was he the Pharisees or Sadducees? I forget which. They came to him. And Jesus said, okay, give me a coin. Sunk their battleship. And then he came up with a remarkable answer. Give unto the things that are Caesar's and give unto the things that are God's. Well, what were they holding? Earthly treasures and not God's. Our heart is not turned back. It is today. The only way today it can go back is repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with thy heart and confess with thy mouth. <coughs> Neither have our steps declined from thy way. Well, they, they've been going the wrong way ever since. I've even told some Jews don't even care about the temple. Though thou hast sore broken us in a place of dragons. I don't know what place of dragons is. But it was an animal back then. Now let me ask you another stupid question. When I grew up. As a teenager, I forget how. There was a game, Dungeons and Dragons. And there was a song back in my parents' time, Puff the Magic Dragon. 
And I think there's a lizard called a Gila Dragon, whatever. How come you can believe those dragons? And, you know, Sir Lancelot kills the dragon, gets to fair me. But when you find the word dragon in the Bible, you don't believe it. When you find unicorns in the Bible, you don't believe it. The Bible's wrong because dragons and unicorns are in the Bible. Yet God made them. And, this, and the devil twists them and turns them to evil, and you, the world, just loves them. So what kind of dragon? I have no idea. I guarantee it's a lizard-type animal. And covered us with the shadow of death. Take 70 A.D. How many Jews were killed? How about under Adolf Hitler? How many Jews were killed? If we have forgotten the name of our God, our name of our God to all Jews is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus saves. Emmanuel. I just blasphemy if any Jews heard that. I'll say it again. I'll sign my name to it. In the name of our God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now say it again. Or stretched out our hands to a strange God. There's all kinds of gods out there. And Israel, in their, in their history, if you go back and read the books of the Bible, the Old Testament, they went out to all kinds of strange gods. Shall not God search this out? Oh, boy, is he searching it out. Imagine when somebody in America says, and God we trust, God's up there in heaven. One little, two little, three little Godies, four little, five little, six little Godies, seven little, eight little Godies. Yeah, this nation, God we trust, make it a small G and add an S. And again, go to the yellow pages and check under churches for, and God's we trust. Let's keep, in God we trust on the money. Yeah, that's a God to some people too. In God we trust while others go fishing. Or go to a racetrack. Or sleep in. For he knows the secrets of the heart. Oh boy, there's the trouble. You know, God knows everything in your heart and every excuse and every lie and every truth. He knows it all. Even though someone else doesn't, he does. Yea, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. And that is quoted in Romans 8.36. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Paul says also, I die daily. Awake. There's a verse for the church age today. Why sleepest thou, O Lord? It's not the Lord today that's sleeping. It, it's us. God is not sleeping. God never sleeps. But you see the condition that this psalmist is. It looks like God is not paying attention. You have fallen asleep. You have sinned. You have come to show the glory of God. Don't go be blaming God for your rebellion. God is awake on the throne and in disgust of what you're doing. Don't you blame God for what's going on in your life because of the sin and this nation and Israel. God fulfilled the scriptures to the Jews 100% about the Messiah and they put him on the cross. And then took the apostles and jailed and killed them. Why sleepest thou, Lord? No, why does the church sleep? Bringing in all the Christmas, the Easter, and the, and the worldly music, and the garbage, and the booze, and all the filth. 
into the church house. God ain't asleep. He's sick. Over his mouth in the church today, he's got a vomit bag. Puking what this church age is today. Arise. That's what we need to do, Lord, need to do. The Lord needs to arise and blow the trump. Cast us not off forever. You know, the only way that some Jews are not going to be cast off forever is when the Lord comes, the second advent. Those down in Salem Petra. You know, there's going to be some Jews who are not going to go. They're going to stay and receive the mark and get the money. You know, in, in Exodus, the, there were Jews that were over the people that were under the Egyptians. So the, the people actually afflicting the Jews were Jews. There are probably stories of some Jews that were for Hitler against the Jews. I guarantee it's always like that. You always got a traitor. Judas was half Jewish. <coughs> he was a Syrian Jew, I believe. He was half Jewish. Look at Saul. He was Jewish, Benjamin. And he kept going after the, the true king of, of Israel. Wherefore hidest thou thy face? Sin. But even still the eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. God ain't hiding. God is not up against a tree going, one, two, three, four. Ready or not, here I come. He sees exactly what you're doing, and he's right in what you're doing. And knows what you're doing. He's making a list and checking it twice to see who's naughty or nice. Some Christians think it's Santa Claus. I say it's God. God's coming. And forget us our affliction and our oppression. He's giving you an affliction. He's giving you oppression because of your sins, because of rebellion against him. When that doctor tells you it's cancer or it's cirrhosis of the liver because of smoking or drinking, don't go, oh God, why did you do this to me? Oh, preacher Hayward, why did this happen? I'll go down the store, buy me a six-pack of beer, and say, this is why it happened. And open them up and pour them over your hands and anoint him as a foolish act. Sin. The wages of sin is death. The only place I see God in that verse, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God is involved in death. He gives you eternal life after you sin. And you have to be a sinner to get the gift. Making a list and checking it twice to see who's been naughty or nice. Jesus is coming pretty soon. I mean, if there's a guy that knows what your what little boys and girls are doing while they're in bed, that's a pervert. And that comes from a saint of the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> Sorry. For our soul is bowed, abode, Probably bold in this condition. Bow is when you do before God. This is, you're bent over to the dust. Exactly what your flesh is. 
Your flesh is dust. Here the soul is meeting with the flesh. The state of an Old Testament saint. Where his body and soul is not circumcised as the saint today is. Our belly cleaveth unto the earth. Laying him down to death. Going to die. The wages of sin is death. Repent. Turn or burn. Get right with God. Put your sins under the blood. 1 John 1 9. Stay away from your sins. Get in the Bible. Get into a Bible believing church. Read your Bible and pray and do what God wants you to do. Will that solve my problem? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It may not. You may get it worse. Can't find the prosperity gospel here, my friend. I'm sorry. You couldn't sell me my life since 19... 87 being saved about the prosperity gospel with people calling themselves Christians. I go, you wouldn't sell me that anything. You know, you're going to suffer if you rebel against God. You're going to suffer if you do what God tells you to do. It'd be better you suffer for doing what God tells you to do than to suffer the rebellion against God. Because when you do what God tells you to do and you suffer, you'll get rewards. When you suffer because you're rebelling against God as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, you will be bald in heaven. Bald? You mean no hair? No, no crowns. Arise for our help. Christian, do you want help? Yeah, I do. Pray for the Lord to come. Did you read the testimony of Stephen? Our help is for the Lord Jesus Christ to come and get us all. That will be the victory over cancer. That will be the victory over sin. That will be the victory over sleeplessness. That will be the victory over pain. That will be the victory over tears. That will be the victory of all victory when the Lord comes. And he is coming. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. Just wait a little longer. He hasn't lied to us. I don't mean say, I'm not saying wait a little longer. mean I don't, I want Jesus to, no, I'm saying, everybody says, you know, where is this coming? Just wait and he'll, he'll come. I want the Lord to come right now. But Paul said he was waiting for the Lord to come in his time. Just wait a little longer. He's coming. He's faithful. And redeem us. Buy us back for thy mercy's sake. And the only way that a Jew is going to get redeeming is because the mercies and the promise of the Lord Jehovah God that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from the twelve tribes. You for the Jew today, <coughs> you got a time of Jacob's trouble is coming. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Messiah. You need to seek out a King James Bible-believing Christian to know the truth and the facts and get a King James Bible and to study it and to realize that your rabbi is lying to you. Hope is in Jesus, the Messiah. Isaiah 53 is not the nation of Israel. Read it. It says one person. The nation of Israel is plural. We're not the mean, evil, wicked Gentiles in Isaiah 53. You are. And what Christ did for you. And you are believing a lie from your rabbi. And you got it on recording. You put it whatever file you want to put it in.
I am saying your rabbi is lying to you unless he tells you Jesus Christ is the Savior, is the Messiah, and I, I doubt he tells you that. This verse, this chapter, is all about the Jews, their history, and their condition today, and their condition is because you're rebelling against God. Either you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's rebellion. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Or you are a born-again Christian, and you are a backslider, and you're still rebelling against God even though you're saved. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen anywhere.